school. So, with that being said, without further ado, Mr. Robert Moore. <laughs> Excellent dude, because he was when he got tall and he played ball, he came out there with us and we was playing like we was in a law. We it was elbow, it was like we're gonna punish you because wherever you go, you're gonna have it easy when you play them, because they ain't gonna be able to do all the stuff we gonna do to you. We was dog. And he took, he might have cried, cussed us out, but he took it. And not only did he take it and become a pretty good basketball player, he raised the basketball player. Father, everything y'all heard, I, 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 I teach kids too. I teach kids. They're different than you all, though. They're what you call adult kids. They're kids that sat here like you did and ain't pay attention to what nobody said their whole life. They ain't listen to their mama. They ain't listen to their daddy. They ain't listen to the teacher. They ain't listen to the coach. They ain't listen to the judge. They ain't listen to nobody. And so now they sitting where I got to teach them at, in jails and institutions. Some of them I can't teach because they're dead. When you don't listen to nobody, that means you don't have any direction. That means you are like a disorder. You out of order. Anybody ever seen a soda machine and you can't get no sodas out of it? And they put the sign on there and say what? Out of order. What's that mean? Out of order. But it got, it's a soda machine, eh? Yes. So why it don't work? Out of order. broke. What else? Nothing's in there. What else? technology don't work. Could be a technical problem. Broke. Don't work. It's out of order. And none of the kind of kids that I teach, they my age and older, and some of your little eight, 18 years older, 18 years older. They're kids, but they're called adult kids. Meaning, they big and tall and got muscles and strong like us, but they are in sitting in chairs like you are with people telling them what to do. Y'all understand? Yes, sir. Because they refuse to do what anybody said for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. So they stuck in grown back. I was one of them. And, and, and I don't know if God a bad word in it, but I, I was one of them and God came and had to come give me himself. Because I'm not listening to nobody. I thought I knew everything. I'm like that little boy in the life serial commercial back in the old days. I ain't hate everything. I'm not listening to my mama, dad. If I don't listen to my mama, why am I listen to a coach? Why am I listen to a teacher? I don't even listen to the lady that feed and clothes. I ain't listening to nobody. And because I ain't listening to nobody, I spent, I'm like 50, I'll be 54 this year. I think I spent over 20 something years in prison, in a cage. And the true part about that is, when I go to jail, every time, see the Lord, Oak Hill, all the jails, every time I go, I do everything they tell me to do. Child time, I'm going to shower. It's time to take a shower, I'm going to take a shower. I do whatever they say do. And the true part was, Ken, I felt the best I ever felt in my life when somebody telling me, giving me good directions on how to take care of myself. Every time they let me out though, when they let me out, I don't know how to live. I don't have no guide. I don't have no instructions. I don't have no instructor. I don't have no director. I don't have no parent that I'm a, if I got a parent and I'm not listening, it's like not having one. You follow me? Yes, I got purrs, but I don't do what they say, so it's like I don't have no purrs. So I'm walking outside of the light, 
16, like, you know, 15, 14, 13, and I know everything. I'm going to trick my mom out her money. I'll hurt, I'll hurt, I'll, I'll hurt a bedroom and her apartment. I'm gonna act like I'm a kid. I'm gonna act like I'm going to school. I'm gonna act like all of this. But really, I'm pimping her. I ain't gonna do nothing she say to. And because I had that kind of mentality, I end up in the cage. Y'all know the cage here, though. Jail. Y'all, and because we got like different levels of people, I'm gonna see can I get y'all this. Anybody got a little infant brother or sister? You know the infinite. If you saw an infant crawling on the floor, if your little infant, little toddler, little brother or sister crawling on the floor and they see a razor blade or an ink pen and they pick it up, what they gonna do with it? Good. Good answer. That's exactly what they gonna do. And what you gonna do if you see them putting it in their mouth? Take it from them. You gonna try to take it from them, right? What are they gonna do? Cry. Cry and what else? Kink and swing and try to hold on to it, right? They don't know if they put the razor blade in their mouth, they're going to kill themselves, right? But you do know that, right? Yeah. So you're trying to stop them from killing themselves, right? Yeah. And they're not listening to you, right? Yeah. That's exactly what we're trying to do. We know something that you don't know. But it's so you, 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 you're going to have to trust us that we love you, we tired. We tired, they tried to get us, we slipped through the cracks some kind of way. Again, I call it God, because we got a lot of people that's dead that we grew up with, that we played ball with, that we set these chairs with. They're dead. They don't, they, they can't have no second chance. They can't, they can't go to reform school and get better. They can't go get rehab. They can't, they, they're dead. Right? Gone. Some kind of way, and I call it God, he let us in. That's why we so much in love with trying to help you. You ever been in trouble or about to get that whooping or whatever, and you say, God, if you get me out of this one, well, I swear to God, I'm going to go to church every Sunday. I'm going to wear a tie. I'm going to wear stacked heels. I'm going to even sing in the choir. And as soon as you get out of it, you do the same thing you've been doing. Can I follow? That's not thinking before you do. Exactly. So, with the little child, we got the little child crawling, and that's what little, that, the only thing that separates the little toddler that's crawling on the floor and you, is knowledge. You have knowledge that he don't have. Y'all understand? Yeah. You know if he sticks something like an ink pen or a razor blade in his mouth, he gonna kill himself. You know if he take a fork and stick it in the electrical socket, he might burn the house down or blow himself up. You have knowledge about that, right? That don't mean you're the brightest man in the world. That just means you know that. Correct? Yes, sir. So you're going to, with that limited knowledge, you're going to try to stop him from blowing the house up, setting everybody on fire, destroying the house, destroying the neighborhood, destroying everything. You're going to try to stop him, correct? Yes. And you just told me what he's going to do. He's going to buck and kick and cry, right? And because the only thing that separates him from you is you have knowledge that he don't have. So that's moving from an infant to a boy, little boy. What separates the little boy from the bigger boy, adolescence, preteens, is what? Now, nah, he was close. Who said that? Discipline. Somebody said it earlier. The knowledge that you have, you got knowledge now that the baby don't have. When, when, when the baby has to go to the bathroom, where he go to the bathroom at? On himself. The boy, he got a little more knowledge. Where he go to the bathroom at? In the bathroom. Right? He got knowledge. He know, yeah, I got to go to the bathroom. And, and, and if he's hungry, he has to wait the mama cook. And he knows the refrigerator and all that, right? The little baby, if he's hungry, what do he do? He's crying. Crying, 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 That's what he do, right? That's normal for him. That's normal for him, but you're a little boy. So mama say, okay, I got to put the food on the stove. Why would you be crying and pouting and stomping your feet like the baby? That's not normal, right? Okay, now we're talking about the big, the big boy. 
What separates them is discipline. Discipline. They know it's some things they have to do because they're about to be men. They're about to be men. They're about to be looked at in the community as the leader of the community. It's some stuff they have to do. And they got to have discipline. They can't just follow any little girl that rub on their legs and say, come on, go in my heart. And they just abandon everything and go with the girl. Y'all follow me? Yes, sir. But you can trick the little boys, show them some candy or something. They got them. The, 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 the pre-adult, he got to have this. Oh, no, thank you. I got something to do. That's what separates the boy from the pre-adult. He, he got to have some discipline because he's about to be a man. Men do what they got to do, not what they want to do. Boys do what they want to do. Boys do what they want to do. That's why they forever need guidance. They need somebody to guide them. They don't know what to do. I mean, I would sit here and tell them a whole lot of stuff, but it, they've been here a long time. I, I, I give them kudos. I wish I had $100 for everybody, but I don't. <laughs> right? So, but they've been sitting here for a long time, and it's hard to sit down that long. But I, I mean, I don't have ADHD or nothing, but I don't. I talk all the time. And that's what makes me enjoy myself. I'm like, well, I'm gonna talk because I can't sit down like that. But understanding that you are responsible for them, you are responsible for them. You just told them. If you see them, you know what danger is. You know, you know how some of the dudes out there getting shot. You know about attitude and mouth and faking and fronting and being a fake phone in a fraud. You know all that. They don't know all this yet. They don't know all this yet. I, 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 I wish I had a program. I wish I had a lot of money. I would build a program called uh, 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 Adopt the Player. Because we're all players, right? Like that. And when I heard them talking about, I heard them talking about you, first thing went to my mind, like, damn, I wish we could take him. I can have him. Right? Because when he said you got bad grade, I ain't the smartest man in the world, but I know how to help you, and then we go to the library together, like, walk you through that job, like the whole thing. You're going to make it. Who know who Stephen Curry is? Stephen Curry. Who know who LeBron James is? Who know who Michael Jordan is? Who know who know who John Barkley is? Who know who who know who Kawan? Who know who Kawanga Kajufu is? You know who he is? Who know who Naeem Akba is? Naeem Akbar. Who know who he is? Who know who Chancellor Williams is? Who is that? Stop playing. Who is Chancellor Williams? No. All the other ones are basketball players. Uh, no. Uh, no. The last three people I named, the last three people I named were black authors who write books designed to save me in your life. Listen up, y'all. I know, I know, I know. They have their authors. They wrote books that are designed to assist you and I with saving not only our life, but their life. One of the books, one of the books that guy Jawanza Kunjufu wrote is called Conspiracy to destroy black boys. Yeah, can y'all hear how that sound? Yeah, conspiracy to destroy black boys. Matter of fact, he got book one and book two. Right? Uh, Naeem Akbar wrote a book called Visions of Black Men. You gotta have a vision. How many people know what GPS is? What's the GPS? Navigation system. Who, who else knows what GPS? Y'all know what GPS system? Something that guides you. Something that guides you. You know what's good about the GPS system? It can't tell you where to go if it don't know where you at. Y'all follow? Yes, sir. It's a satellite that got to beam down. Where are you? Anything that 
has to tell you where you want to go, first you got to tell it, where are you? And my question right now, where are you? In your life. Where you going? Some of us say, I'm going to the pros. Really? Okay. Good luck. Right? The GPS system sends a signal to an instrument and says, okay, you are here on Irvington Street, and you program inside of it where you want to go. I want to go to Allison Mall. And then it'll start giving you the directions. We'll turn this way, go down here, go down here. God, in his infinite wisdom, the people he sent before you, us, we are like the GPS, right? But if you not receiving what we saying, right, you probably not going to get where you trying to go. Y'all don't follow me, right? I'm going to try to break this down. You got to know where you at. You say you're going to the pros, the brother earlier say, how you getting there? How you going to get there? I'm going to just play basketball. Okay, good luck. You might make it. Who else wanted to be a doctor? How you gonna do it? Pay attention in school, get my that's, education. That's the greatest answer in the whole world. Because you can do anything you want, oh, anything, anything. I'm living with it. Here I am, about to start my own business. I never out there where rich folks live. I drive whatever I feel like driving. I fly when I feel like flying. And I'm a crummy, ex crummy. Did y'all hear that? <laughs> Extra, right? And, and I'm not bragging because God did. Because I told you if it was left up to me, I'd be dead. Some kind of way I slipped through. And when I recognized that I slipped through, I say, man, what, you, what was that you wanted me to do? And he said, man, come help my people. So I did not wait. It take me like uh, about an hour to get home now. And I got off work at 1 o'clock this evening and had to hang around the city to 6.30. So I'm kind of sleepy, and I got to get up 3 in the morning to come back. I work in D.C. but they way out there in the bulldog. But guess what? I wouldn't trade it for the world. Wouldn't trade it for the world. Man, I swear, if y'all just listen, it's, it's Stephen Curry, y'all know Jefferson, my bad, my bad. Stephen Curry, LeBron James, and all of them, guess what you all got in common? They sat in chairs just like you sitting in there. But guess what the difference is to some of y'all? They listen. They listen to somebody. They listen to a coach. They listen to an uncle or a granddad. They listen to somebody and follow instructions. And when they, when, when they, when they, all of the instructions, that's like the GPS on. Now they know where to go. Oh, yeah, I got to go here. Don't you think girls tried to trick them out of their rings, out of their uh, success? Don't you think girls, parties, and all that was thrown at them too? Discipline. Discipline. Some of the adult children that I, I teach or, 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 or counsel, they were stars. Let me straighten that out. They still are stars. They just fall. And they can get up. But that thing beat them so much in their own body and in their own mind that they don't think they can get up. And I'm sitting there like, man, get up, get up, get up. And every so often, they get up and start to restore their life back again. You, you, can it just say, you in a greater position because you ain't even started yet. You, you at the beginning start line. And all you have to do, listen to somebody, mom, daddy, sister, brother, because like the little kid crawling on the floor, you dangerous and you, you put yourself in dangerous positions that you can't see, but we see. Y'all follow? That's and you are not going to do what the little baby doing, are you? Like buck and, and kick and tell us we don't know what we're talking about. We do know what we're talking about. Because we got dead people at the cemetery to prove. You follow? We know you're going to die if you continue 
than not listening to nobody. We know you're going to die if you continue to be hard here. Because you don't have no guidance. You're going to walk out in the street and they, there's more bullets in the street than mosquitoes. And we say, don't go out there. And you say, man, I'm going to basketball court. I'm going to play ball. I don't care what you say. Please, listen to your parents, listen to your coaches, listen to your teachers. Thank you. about two more minutes, because that's a hard act to follow right there. I'm trying to tell y'all. His generation was rough. I came up behind that. And I want to show and illustrate the difference in them generations. Big fella, nephew, come here. Come here, twin. Come here. Mom. Man, look at these four kings right here. Look at the four kings. Is that five? Yeah. My bad. Y'all can count. I can't. Look at that five that's right there, man. That's representative of the youth factor and the generation gap of what's up here today that was conveying nothing but love and knowledge to you tonight. This is how it works. And at some point, paths crawl. I'm going to switch up over here. Switch up over there. See what I'm saying? But it's all one, and it stays the same. That's what happened here. Everybody on this panel has touched and crossed paths at some point in life. I looked up the... Mr. Moore, then I look up to him now. People look up to me. I have a responsibility just like they do. It's never in. We ain't here with sweats. Y'all can sit down. We ain't here with sweats. We ain't here with jeans. But make no mistake, you ask anybody in this room, when you go to the table to make that deal, mm -hmm. to represent your product, to sell yourself, to position yourself, your community or your family, you got to have this right here, and you got to know how to coordinate. Different colors mean different things when you go to various events. Depending upon who you sit across the table from, you gotta watch your color scheme. The message you're trying to convey, colors. Life is about order, young man, young lady. And we gotta learn and understand that order. Mr. Moore told you. Good luck with that, that NBA dream. That's real. I just told y'all, my middle son, I had high hopes for basketball. I got a younger son playing football. I had high hopes for the middle one. But the politics of this day, real. So you got to have a second plan. Not only did he have a second plan, he said, man, okay, I ain't get recruited like I was supposed to, even though I done destroyed everything been put in front of me. I ain't get recruited like, well, okay, cool. I'll go this way. I'll go the JUCO route. Where did you go? Left from JUCO, went to another school. D2. Who know the difference between D1, D2, D3? You got a lot of guys in D3 should be a D1. Got a lot of guys in D2 should be a D3. Got a lot of guys in D1 should be a D2. But they D that's the game. So when you decide you want to be that athlete, you want to make it to the next level, it's going to start with this. Because when you go to the school, you sign your letter of intent. Need time. Need suit. Need suit. You present yourself. Definitely our business. Yes, sir. 
It's done better than plenty of money in sports. And we got some studs in this jump, flat out athletes. But you have to prepare yourself, like we've been telling you all night, to be flat out. Because ain't nobody gonna give you nothing. Ain't nobody gonna give you nothing. Yes, sir. Again, these gentlemen took the time out of their nine to five, their jobs, their lives, because they love you. They want to see you do better. I got goosebumps on everybody when they told their story because it's all resonating. You never stop learning. When you're 55, 60, you still learn. You did when you tell yourself there ain't nothing else out of you. Learn. Go on, on in the woods, man. Go lay down. Because in life, you will always learn, no matter where you at, how old you are. I've been to Dubai, I've been to Ecuador, I've been to Egypt, I've been to London. Now, y'all don't even know that. I've been everywhere. I've been to Iraq.